I got just an email from somebody and said, you know, they're looking for for people to join the Buckminster Fuller Institute's Design Science Studio. So I know I looked it up and and I applied. And they chose 144 artists from all over the globe to uh, be a part of what they called the cohort, the Design Science Studio. The idea here is that he's painting with water. Uh, and so the picture that he paints evaporates um, and, and clouds over again. The, the, and the chalk uh, heals itself. They have very specific goals. They're, going to, they're, they're following some of Bucky's ideas um, to make the, the world work for 100% of humanity. Well, life on the planet. It includes parakeets. Uh, yeah, I know, you're going to fly around a little bit, and then I'm going to call you, and you're going to come to my head. Okay? All right. So the deal with Birdie is that I've learned how to talk to parakeets. Not to, I, I haven't taught the parakeet how to talk. I've learned how to talk to the parakeet and, and uh, converse with it. Chirp, chirp. So when Birdie is up in the rafters there, because it's free, chirp, 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 it, it speaks in a kind of Morse code. It wants to hear how many times, if it chirps twice, I have to chirp twice in, it, in response. Bucky thought this could be achieved in 10 years, and he ha had intended to start it in the 60s sometimes, but uh, now this is 50 years later that they actually are working with the design science decade, decade to see whether this is possible. And they're starting, the, every year they'll have a new cohort added to this, 144 each year, bigger and bigger uh, ideas. And, and these people are supposed to come up with projects. And I'm trying to figure out what, how I can participate in this as a performance artist who tends to make performances about historical artists and kind of mix that autobiographically with my own experience. The captain also has this magic map, this this screen that he he uses to uh, uh, see where they are, and it's a uh, uh, he does this little perform painting thing as well. So he just. That little clip okay. is fine. I mean, end of my recording. I would say that. I would say that. Uh, you know, I stumble, but I don't want to do. I don't want to do take after take after take just in order to get one or two words, right, uh, right. It's just, it's kind of quick and dirty kind of, kind of thing. So now we've got to set up for the next character. So I'm good at kind of creating characters. So I've created not only a characters, but a setting for them, which I call a micro venue. It's like about the size of an American jail cell. I don't want that. 50s modern look to it. I'll just put this chair here, and then I'll sit and talk to the camera after I do my drawing, OK? I'm a performer and artist that, uh, that became interested in Buckminster Fuller many years ago. I had an art teacher in, uh, in college that had studied with Buckminster Fuller, and she told me all about, uh, about him. And, and in 1967, I actually hitchhiked from Michigan all the way to Montreal to see a geodesic dome. He also designed automobiles and modular housing and lots of other exciting things. And he was a member of the Black Mount Mountain College uh, group, of, group of artists and designers that are very influential in the, in the history of, of American art and experimentation. I'll take the hat off. I'm Robinson Caruso. 30 years ago, a shipwreck left me stranded on an island in the Sea of Corn with an albino Australian Buttiger. <laughs>
named Bertie. And we were rescued by the DSS Fuller, where artists convert to storerooms and staterooms into studios and venues for projects. Projects that restore and regenerate the world's cultural and natural resources. I found out, for instance, that many of the puzzles are made with the same stamp, but different pictures. Like if I have this one, uh, King Tut, and this one, uh, um, beer cans, I, 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 could, I could mix pieces from the one and make into the other and make this. Um, now, I'm going to do it over again because, because all that improvisation with, the, with, with, with that stuff, I don't think I have time for that. I was very interested when he came to the University of Iowa campus in uh, nine, uh, 1969 when I was doing graduate work there. A friend of mine, a friend of mine picked him up at the airport because we were in the multimedia department. Somehow we were associated with this and, and, uh, and, and drove him to the UI ballroom. He went directly on stage. He talked for five hours straight. And there's a piece of black velvet in there and I'm gonna draw on it with some colored chalks. Just like the one we do, it not necessarily something we're gonna use in the show, but uh, uh, in, the, in, in this clip, but it's something that uh, we may just want for another reason. For another reason. See, I have more panels, but I'm just gonna do this central panel. This should be to a piece of music like uh, Unchained Melody or something like that. And this is, uh, where am I? Okay. You know, I'm 77, and, and uh, Grandma Moses started painting when she was 78. <laughs> so uh, it's one of the best, one of the best examples of a, uh, you know, you could starting late, getting a late, being a late starter. That's one of the things I want to tell the people on the, with these ideas that they can, that, that that it's not too late to join the cruise ship Earth and, and, and to, to save the planet. You, you, you've got to be, you, you know, you can, you can start old and you can, and you can do new things. He talked for five hours straight. Just, just, just nonstop about his ideas, and and people came and went. Not me. I stayed the whole time, and and then it. After five hours, it was time for his flight back. They drove him directly to the airport. It's all he ever saw was that ballroom, and it, <laughs> I, I thought this man is obsessed. This is a this is a this is an artist of the first order with that degree of of obsession. There's a very sad scene in the Man Who Discovered Iowa where Grant Wood is sitting on this station and thinking about, he's thinking about, you know, how things went wrong with his life. And he says that when he gets, that when he's, he's got stomach cancer, he decides that when he gets better, he's going to change his name and move someplace where nobody knows him and start painting in a different style. Now, Thomas R. Benton told him that, that that's the kind of ravings of a man who's dying without a god to turn to. But no, nope, he'd changed his style before, and he wanted to escape fame and get away where nobody knew him so he could be an authentic person again and, and not a celebrity. Anyway.
that's the thing. And then, uh, then he takes down the, the little station and opens up the landscape, and his new style turns out to be drawing on black velvet, so that's kind of a in-joke there. And the fact is, uh, each person on board the ship, which I call cruise ship Earth, uh, because Bucky's, uh, Bucky's idea was that we're all on spaceship Earth, cruise ship Earth is sailing around the globe, um, picking up passengers and turning them into artists and making their staterooms become venues for them to explain their ideas to make the world better for 100% of life. Okay, that's the end of my recording.